As promised, yes, a little bit early this afternoon, but that's okay. Uh, Danielle Shea is VP of Options at Simpler Trading, back with us again for a brand new week. I like this because we can kind of look ahead at what is to come instead of kind of looking back at what has already happened. Ms. Shea, what do you think about, uh, I want to get your opinion here just to kick things off about this crypto mess that continues to seemingly unwind. Silvergate, obviously the latest to be in significant trouble here. I've personally, I've had a number of people reach out today saying, what do we do with this? Is there a trade at this point? I mean, we're sitting at six bucks right now for Silvergate, but if it is a not going to end well type of situation, how do you approach that from an option standpoint? You know, when you look at the whole crypto situation, to me, it's just another sign of the big bubble that popped. And when you're looking at trading possibilities, I mean, honestly, the best one to trade is going to be Coinbase. So if I look over and I see if there's any, you know, opportunities as it relates to options in uh, this space, I'm looking at Coinbase. But I mean, I can't even see on this chart that there's a good shorting opportunity based off of the fact that there's this really nice consolidation. You're holding up above the 200 simple. You're holding up above the 8 and 21 EMA. So honestly, Coinbase looks bullish here, which when you take into account the crypto blow up plus the fact that Coinbase looks bullish, they're not in confluence. So for me, that's a do not trade situation because I like ideas that are in confluence. I love that concept in the sense that sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing at all. In this case, it might be uh, that. I mean, outside of a day trade here and there or something, if it's moving, obviously over a couple of days, it might be better just to, as you said, uh, stay on the sidelines. Huge week as far as the overall market is concerned with uh, Jerome Powell coming through the next couple of days. We get uh, non-farm payrolls coming up on Friday. Let's start wide here and work our way into uh, individual names. What are you looking at as far as the market is concerned? And how do you go into a day or two days in a row here, like what's to come tomorrow and Wednesday with Powell testifying? So when you look at the price action over the course of the past couple of days, I think the most important factor was the fact that the put call ratio got really high and everybody was short. So, you know, we saw a little bit of a short squeeze in the indexes. When you flip over to the NASDAQ in particular, you can see the way that the NASDAQ bounced right off of the 50 simple. And whenever you get a bounce like that, Whenever you get a bounce like that at the 50 simple, um, you're going to have a situation where you can generally trade some, you know, short squeezes to the upside. But I think that the guys were right, you know, that that momentum is waning right now. So I would actually say that, you know what, this short squeeze looks like it's about over, especially going into Powell this week. So let's look for some things that we can short in addition to some earnings calls. So looking at some of the names the guys were looking at. I also like Amazon. I think Amazon's trading directly up into resistance. And I think that's another one we could short to the downside. Going into uh, what's going to be probably a most the most important day of the week, which would be Friday, with this non-farm payrolls number. If we go back to last month, that absolute blowout report was essentially what kicked off that last round of selling. We're getting to a point in the overall market where there's a lot of resistance above, and maybe the path of least resistance is back to the downside. Oh, definitely. I think in the long term, the path of least resistance is to the downside. Of course, when you get those shorter term moves, I mean, it's it's a lot of fun to come in and trade them on a near term basis. But ultimately, on the weekly chart patterns, I mean, you have a situation where you've got these major head and shoulders patterns, you have a downwards trend. Um, and there's just a lot of overhead resistance, not just in the technicals, but also on the macro standpoint. So I think, you know, shorter term upside trade, but Right now, um, everything's going to be focusing on Mr. Powell this week, and we're probably going to see some more downside. All right, let's talk about some uh, individual names here. Uh, still, uh, we're through earnings, essentially, but uh, there are still a few uh, notable names that are coming up this week. You obviously keep a close eye on those. One of them in the chip sector, not one that we typically look at on a day trade type of a basis, but uh, give me your thoughts on Broadcom here, ABGO. So when you look at AVGO, uh, the reason why I like this ticker is because they've done really well on earnings in the past. We've seen a lot of gap ups. And when you have a ticker that does that on a regular basis, what I like to do is I like to monitor them and either trade them right before earnings, which with Broadcom, I did actually do that in the options market. I sold some put credit spreads, which I ended up buying back the next day. But another thing that you can do as a day trader is you want to watch for the stickers that have what I call 2x moves. 
moves. So that's going to be twice what the market is expecting them to do. So if they end up having this big gap up, a lot of times they'll continue going for a few days after that, and you can ride that momentum. Your note here on uh, Dick Sporting Goods as well coming out this week. They've beaten 11 of 12 of the past quarters. That's something I would not have uh, guessed. But uh, talk about DKS a little bit. So the reason why I like this one is because it's so close to the all-time high, and it also has 15% short interest. Whenever you have a ticker that is close to the high like that, you have a nice cup and handle pattern on the daily chart, the market maker moves about $11, $12, that would bring you within range of an all-time high, and it would also you know, send short sellers uh, running, running for their lives. So... That's why I like to watch that one. If this one does end up beating and trading higher tomorrow, uh, you could get a nice short squeeze to trade during the day. All right, another one that's coming up this week. Uh, again, not really one of those stocks that we talk about a lot on a regular basis, but around earnings can give you those outside range type of moves. Alta Beauty is what I'm talking about, ULTA. A decent looking chart if you go out to a higher time frame. You know, I love Ulta and I love that it doesn't get that much attention because it's one of those, you know, slow and steady names that's kind of in the background that you can trade on a trending basis. And so sometimes, you know, especially when you're a shorter term time frame trader and you're just looking for a chart that's going to move with the trend, that's exactly what you're looking for. Now, I personally love Ulta and I love shopping there and I know that they love to take my money. So it's another reason why I like to trade it. Um, but when you're looking at this one, I mean, you can see the nice bullish pattern and you can see the way that it's crushed it on earnings. I mean, last quarter they were estimated to make about four bucks and they made over five. Um, they did pull back slightly after earnings last quarter, but, um, that I would just take that as a re I would just look at that and say, Hey, you know what? It rallied so strong going into the earnings report. Um, so that's why it pulled back a little bit last quarter, but overall it normally trades higher. You're going to have to use your charts because my charts, I don't know what's wrong with them right now, but they decided to freeze. So <laughs> if you, if you can throw up one of your charts, that would be great. That's You know what? We, we have that problem on an ongoing basis. So all good. Uh, for anyone wondering, Thursday after the close, I want to say, is uh, Ulta Beauty. As far as a possible opportunity there, how would you approach that? So I would just look at it in the options market as an opportunity to sell put credit spreads. So normally when I have a ticker that I'm bullish on going into earnings, I will usually sell some put credit spreads on it the day before it reports. Or, you know, if it's reporting in the afternoon, you can also just do it in the afternoon that same day. Another thing that you can do in the options market is you can place a bullish trade that will last another week or two, um, and you can target the overhead target. So my target on Ulta is going to be 550, so you could place a call debit spread, you could place a call butterfly, um, targeting up into that zone a couple weeks after, because what will happen sometimes is these companies will come out and they'll have a nice earnings report and it'll gap up and then it'll kind of keep going along with the trend in the weeks after the report. All right. I want to, I, you had MongoDB on here, MDB, which is another one that's reporting, um, this week as well. Not again, in that same kind of category gives you a move or a potential move around earnings, but otherwise, uh, not really one that we typically look at on a day-to-day -day basis. However, I uh, wanted to mention Tesla because yet again today, Elon comes out with uh, more price cuts in the U.S. this time on the S, on the X. Does this matter? And they were also talking, I saw during lunch hour, a little bit more about the investment that's going to happen into Mexico. What are your thoughts on Tesla at this point after that? Let's be honest, bit of a disappointment last week. You know what? Well, first of all, let's talk about the event last week. That's, I mean, literally happens every single time Tesla has any kind of news related event. And for that reason, I like to trade Tesla higher into any news related event and trade it lower afterwards because every single time, you know, the media comes out and says, oh, he doesn't have a plan. And you know, let's short the stock. And so I think that one's pretty predictable. So I actually think that after the event last week, it's pulled it back into a really nice spot and it's consolidating and it could take off again. Now, as it relates to the new news, I mean, <laughs> to be 100% honest, 
I think that Elon is just trying to mess with Joe Biden because I think that he was a little bit upset that his cars didn't weren't underneath the price point where people could get a tax rebate. So I think it's kind of funny that, you know, the new laws came out about tax rebates for EVs. And then all of a sudden he cut the prices just so the cars would fit into that category. So that's what I think about that. And I do think that uh, it is bullish in the long term for Tesla because I'm always a Tesla bull. Yeah, very, very clear, obviously, uh, line in the sand on that chart anyways. But uh, Elon playing Elon games, as uh, Elon typically does. Uh, we appreciate the information, as always. Daniel Shea is VP of Options over at Simpler Trading. Best of luck this week. Uh, it's going to be a fun one, no doubt, heading towards Friday.